Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Bahamas Historical Society. A Happy New Year to everybody. Again, I've got to thank the volunteers and the committee for keeping the building going and, and the place open. And now we open seven days a week. Uh, thanks to Brian, he's doing a double shift Saturday and Sunday at the moment, temporarily. <coughs> Um, I've got to make an apology about the lateness of the journal. Um, we had a little difficulty this year with the ads, and um, there was a new man on the layout, and it took a little while to get the layout right. Uh, the new book, um, The History of the Bahamas and Pictures, is selling quite well. Uh, one bad note, um, we've had a, a few small robberies. Um, last year, Vernell had a chain snatch for, from a neck. Dolly had one in December, and um, Kay uh, just two weeks ago. So we've got some extra police presence, and I talked to the security guard down next door, and he keeps an eye out at four o'clock as the ladies are leaving. And then as you can see, we're trying to clean and paint the building. Thanks um, to the volunteers, the three students from St. Andrew's School who are there uh, doing their community service. Okay, our guest speaker. <laughs> I just can't give you what I consider to be the highlights of the six pages of his biography. It's as long as your arm as they say it goes. From 1979 to 2004, he was an officer in the US Army, um, I think for about seven or eight of those years, and then he uh, went into the Army Reserve and, and uh, but now he's retired. From 1986 to 1981, he did a PhD at Stanford University in German and Medieval Studies. Listen to his dissertation. The Exile and Return, Heroic and Spiritual Journeys in Germanic Literature. The theme of exile in early medieval German literature is examined in this heroic and Christian context. And from 2001 to the present time, he's been the Associate Dean of Yale College uh, the Dean of the Yale Summer Session and the Special Programs. He lectures in uh, German languages and literature at Yale University, obviously. I thought it was interesting that um, in 1995-96, he conducted a seminar in Icelandic family sagas. Is Icelandic a different language than German? I guess it is. Germanic, but it's, uh, it's different. Germanic, but different, yeah. Um, <clears throat> one of the highlights I picked out was from 2000 and 2012. He taught introduction to Middle High German literature, the poetry of Walther von der Vogelweib. I don't know if I get my V's and W's right. <laughs> Medieval songs of love and war, um, and it features German fairy tales, um, and it's an advanced language course. In 2005 um, to right now. He's a consultant and chair, which is a White House appointment at the Army Education Advisory Board uh, on the subcommittee, the Command and General Staff College at uh, Fort Leavensworth. In 2003 and 4, he was a Chief Civil Military Humanitarian Operations in the United Nations Mission to Libya, to Liberia, sorry. 1996, a Civil Affairs Officer in the Implementation Forces in Hungary, and He's had more than uh, 20 publications. Uh, just pick one out, the 2007 Rules for the End Game, the world of the <laughs> Nibelungen Lied. <laughs> Is that how you pronounce it? Nibelungen Lied, yeah. Nibelungen Lied, yeah. Just, but, but I'm not quite proficient in the German yet. So he's had more than 20 publications. This evening, talking about the cloisters and its medieval origins, I'd like to uh, have the pleasure of introducing William T. Aubrey. Thank you so much, Jim. Well, and thank you all for coming. Um, it's a pleasure to see such a, a, a good turnout. Um, and thanks for that, uh, that warm welcome. Thank you. So, uh, I don't know that the military um, part plays any role in this, um, not that I know of, 
Um, but I did want to just say I've, I've been at Yale now for about 20 years um, teaching uh, in the German department and in medieval studies teaching German medieval literature. Uh, the best I can say in just a few words, it's sort of like teaching Chaucer only in English, so in German. So it's um, uh, something similar. Um, what, of course, goes along with medieval literature is medieval history. So what I'd like to talk about this evening in the time that we have, and certainly want to leave time for questions, is something about the Middle Ages and the Bahamas. Now, of course, the puzzle to me initially, and I've been coming here now for about eight years, absolutely love vacationing here, joined the society a couple of years ago, um, always have enjoyed uh, the, uh, the emails and the newsletters that come from Jim. And I kept thinking to myself, well, wouldn't it be interesting um, to be able to provide a lecture? The only problem was I don't know anything about Benhamian literature uh, or history. So uh, it turned out, as I kept thinking about this, that, um, wait a minute, over there on Paradise Island, there is this piece of medieval architecture that dates back to the 14th century. I could do that. So what I want to do today is talk a little bit about the medieval origins of the cloisters, talk a little bit about um, what a cloister is, then we'll talk a little bit about uh, the history of monasticism, monks, friars, who, in fact, these people were who built the cloisters. What I won't talk about today is the more modern history, the 20th century history, how the cloisters got to the Bahamas. Um, I think there's still some mysteries to be uncovered there. Um, I think we've seen some of the literature. We know uh, that it was reconstructed in 1962. But I thought all of that would make an excellent talk um, should I be invited back. So uh, that's a, a project still to come. I'd like to, uh, like to certainly write that up and, uh, and see what we can uncover about the, uh, uh, how the cloisters came to the Bahamas. So let me start uh, right away here, obviously, we know what this is. This is our beloved cloisters. But what I'd like to do is orient you now to the cloisters both in time and place. Previous time and place. Where is it from? When was it built? And by whom? So let's look at some of the evidence. We have um, some evidence right here. In fact, there's I'm sure you all know there's this lovely bench right in front of the cloisters there. Uh, and inscribed, it says, this cloister was built in the 12th to 13th century in Montreux, France, by the Augustinian order, rebuilt in 1962, and so forth and so on. So that's a bit of information to go on. But I think we all know that as good historians, we should always be skeptical. So I think we need to approach this bit of information with some skepticism. Uh, we'll do that. Um, we'll see that some of it's right and some of it isn't. Um, but we'll investigate this a little bit more. What this symbol is over here, that's Latin, ora et labora, the meaning in English Prayer and work, a good word to live by. The only problem is it's not from the Augustinian order, but rather from the Benedictines. So we'll straighten that out a little bit too. Some other information that we have, we've been able to uncover. This is an old book from the looks of it. Um, you can see here, again in Latin, Orbis Augustinianus. The date here, we can figure that out as 1672, if I've got my characters correct. 
and the author is Augustinus Lubin, or Lubin as it would have been French. He wrote this book essentially saying, here are all of the Augustinian monasteries in the world and where they are when they were founded. So we find here our first reference to, in fact, the place where our cloisters is from. Conventus, I'll translate the Latin, Montis Regalis. So this Montrejeau in the local dialect, not exactly French, but Gascon dialect, Mons Regalis in Latin, um, means King's Mountain. It's essentially related, exact corollary to Montreal, Canada. We know Montreal, and there are lots of Montreal. Um, this is another version of it. Montrego, say Montreal, Opidum in the diocese of the convent of Comines, super neste fluvium on the Neste River in Vasconia, that's Gascony, in Registrum ad annum 1420. 1420 is, according to this book, the first reference that we have to the monastery in the registry. Well, that's not the 12th century, it's not the 13th, it's the 15th, it's not even the 14th. So, what I've been able to uncover is, unfortunately, not a single date. We have two choices, and this, I think, will take a little more digging. It's either founded in 1308 or in 1381. Now, the most recent scholarship on this gives a date of 1308, but again here, I think I'm preaching to the choir that a good historian should always list his or her sources. Unfortunately, that's not done in this work. So 1308, we're not really sure where that date comes from. 1381 is the one that the order, in fact, accepts now. Either way, and we're not going to worry about the date too much, but the scholarly opinion at this point certainly is that it was founded in the 14th century. So we can go with the 14th century, and that will be good enough for us tonight. Where is Montrejeau? Way down here at the base of the Pyrenees, almost in Spain. The nearest large city is Toulouse, beautiful little city, I'd say, about a half million population. Toulouse, most famous, I think, these days. I know there's an aviator in the room. The headquarters of Airbus, French Airbus, uh, is located in Toulouse. A uh, very historical city. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, so it's 